Hey everybody, welcome back to another video update from All Things MSP. Today's update is from Compliance Scorecard, and of course, we love when we have these. These are testimonials, and, and I love it when we can hear from a partner uh, about how they work with one of our vendor sponsors, because that is really where the rubber meets the road. So today I have Josh Hobine from Centrex IT with me. Uh, let me go ahead and bring him up. Hey, Josh. Hey, Eric. So I guess to kick us off, tell me a little bit about you, first of all, uh, and then a little bit about Centrex IT. Yeah, so I've been in the MSP industry for the last um, you know, 15 years or so, give or take, um, with three years of that being uh, a side project where I did some restaurant management. Um, but I've been in IT or, or the MSP world for most of my career. Um, I've been with Centrix for a little over a year now. Uh, Centrix uh, is a uh, San Diego based MSP. We do have clients kind of scattered around the nation. Uh, I myself am actually located in South Dakota, so right smack in the middle. But uh, I get to do a little bit of little of everything with cybersecurity, information security, compliance, GRC, you know, the super fun side of cybersecurity. Yeah, of course, all the policy making and, <laughs> and road mapping and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's always fun talking to people who want to get into cybersecurity because it's the hot thing. And it's like, hey, well, you know, there's always the need for GRC. And uh, you get to talking about the policies. And it's like, hey, it's not the sexy side of cybersecurity, but it's such an important part of it. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is not all threat hunting. No. And, you know, I, I mean, I do have my hoodie. So, like, I'll throw that up every now and then yeah. and, and pretend. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely a lot more policy and procedure driven than it is, um, you know, hoodie in a dark room coding. You know, that's awesome. So uh, talking about compliance and policies and those kinds of things, obviously, our sponsor for this episode is Compliance Scorecard, of which you guys are a customer. And what kind of led you to be looking for that kind of solution? So uh, what we've developed here at Centrix IT is what we call the cybersecurity maturity model. Um, it's not reinventing the wheel at all, but uh, what we've done is we've taken the CIS controls as far as the risk framework, and instead of the different implementation groups with the 160-some controllers or whatever, we broke it down into a pretty easily digestible five-stage maturity model. Well, as part of that, and as part of maturing your organ your operational maturity as well as your cybersecurity maturity, you need policies, right? So, uh, in fact, in level two of our maturity model, um, you start creating your disaster recovery policy, business continuity plan. Um, and then in level three, you're getting like your incident response plan, for example. Um, level one, you're appointing a security officer. Level two is like the um, security in or incident response personnel. So all the key stakeholders, which then of course, um, mature into a who to call list for your incident response, right? So it all comes together. So we needed some sort of product that would be able to support that. And the thing with policies is there are a lot of compliance as a service products out there, programs, but it's pretty expensive. I mean, if you ask them, hey, I need you to make me a disaster recovery policy for the client, you know, they will go through and they will spend the time. Uh, and there is a lot of time involved with them, don't get me wrong, but you're seeing quotes on those for about $10,000 per, per document. Um, and, and I kind of find that across the board, you know, so we needed something a little more cost effective and not only cost effective, but also better than just grabbing a template, right? You can, you can have chat GPT or Bard, uh, or you can just Google like disaster recovery template and, and download those and fill it out, but it's not quite the same, right? It's, uh, some finding something in the middle of those, so, you know, better than a template and more affordable than a $10,000 engagement. Uh, and compliance scorecard. So they fit in perfectly for what we were looking for. Um, they do give you templates, but they are up to date. And not only that, they teach you how to write, right? So they're going to give you a template. So, you know, they go off of the, uh, the, the teach you how to fish. And then uh, you can then write your own policy templates based off of, you know, what they have in their platform. Okay. So when you were evaluating who to go with, what, were some of the deciding factors that made you go with compliance scorecard? 
The biggest deciding factor is just how a- and how active Tim, the the owner, is in the community. I mean, there's so much knowledge, and he's really a rising tide, uh, you know, rises all ships yep. kind of person. So you could tell that you know he knows what he's talking about. Um, and again, the the price point is right. And the biggest thing is just how easy it is to have these templates. So uh, all of our all of your clients, uh, every business, not even just your clients. So say every business needs a disaster recovery plan, a business continuity plan, an incident response plan. So how do you get all of your clients to have that? Not only you, you can't, it's not scalable. You know, as an MSP, everything needs to be scalable and efficient. And the, you can't just download these templates off online and make all these. It's not a scalable way to get all of your clients having these documents. But again, with Compliance Scorecard, with their platform, they're doing something that I'm not aware of any other platform doing is making scalable documentation as a service really across all of your clients. You load them in there and, you know, hey, here's your policy. You write it once and you can deploy it to all of your clients. Now, obviously, you need to edit, you know, here bits that you're in there to make it um, stand out and more specific to your clients. But for the most part, there you go. I mean, you're 85% of the way there. And then, you know, you're working with the client to finish it. I'm not aware of any other product on the market that does it to the efficiency and scalable level that compliance scorecard does. And really it's that scalability that gives you the efficiency to be able to do it for a more reasonable price, which is what a lot of MSP size clients are looking for. But It also, because it's not just a template, it's a platform, I would imagine that's where kind of the slight adjustments that you need to make for each type of client comes into play. Yeah, and not only that, I mean, your regulatory requirements are changing. So if you're adhering to something that's in the NIST or HIPAA or something and that has an update, um, if imagine if you didn't have compliance core card, if you will, you're now having to download the new template and do all of this manual work. Whereas again, you know, with compliance core card, A, it's going to be updated because that's part of the service and B, you can push it out to all of the clients with that update. And you nailed it too. The platform is another aspect of it. So when we go um, and we, we sell this to our client, not only are they getting the documentation, we're, we're writing 95% of the documentation for them, they also get training and access to it because they can upload their own internal policies and things to it um, as well. So they're being trained, hey, this is a document platform. You guys own this. This is yours. Use it. Here's how easy it is to, to develop your own internal. You know, you're know, you going to get these set with it, uh, the, these base documents, but um, run wild with it. So it, it's more than just, hey, documentation as a service. Awesome. So what did it take in terms of onboarding? How long did it take from the time you decided to go with Compliance Scorecard to the time you were actually creating policies? Uh, I mean, less than a day. It's it's very, very easy. Um, The system's also very intuitive as well. So you you get access to it, you add some people to it, and, you know, bam, your your templates are loaded and and you're ready to go, ready to write. Your your policies, um, again, if you're using the templates, you edit them as needed, and it's very easy to go through the review process, the approve process, having all of the chain logs, change logs that are there automated. It's very audit ready. And then you have a, a knowledge base once all of your things are published as well. So, I mean, you can get started easily in less than a day, very quick. Nice. Now, what if I'm an MSP and I don't have somebody like you who's a cybersecurity specialist on staff? Uh, is is this something that I can still leverage for my clients? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the advantage of, of having you know, like my role is I have the time dedicated to be able to write the policy and get it most of the way there. Um, ultimately, it is the client who owns the policy and they have to carry it across the the, fin- the, the touchdown or end zone, whatever, you, whatever analogy you want to go. Right. Um, but the, the very least is like the templates are there. Right. So, you know, maybe you could adjust your go to market strategy where they get the the they get the. Um, the product, the platform, and, you know, hey, here's the base templates, and then the client at that point has to finish them. You know, it's a very, very simple to deploy those out, very, like, 
I mean, you're talking maybe two hours of setup time, right? Uh, you put the users in whatever permissions you want, you deploy the templates, and it's ready to go for the client. You know, if you want to get more involved with it, if you have the time, great. If not, you know, still you're provide you're getting your client so much closer than any other product out there that they you know have something ready to go. Now, what happens when you have a question about a certain you know specific compliance or something like that is is compliance scorecard staff to kind of help you work through some of those questions that might come up as you're creating a policy yeah um they have support that you can contact right within there um the the support is a generally you know probably product specific but again going back to the great part about tim is you know this is like his world that he eats sleeps breathes lives yep. in the compliance scorecard world so if you're watching this and you haven't heard of tim that's very surprising right um you know he's very much community focused so reaching out to him in one of the many ways you can reach out to him you know the the compliance scorecard has their own slack um he's also on discord although not as much and i give him crap for that all the time because i think discord's better than slack but he's there um you know he's on reddit he's on you know facebook groups he's on linkedin um so if you have a specific compliance question i mean tim is going to be the one that answers it and i'm willing to bet that if you submit one through the platform rather than like what i do is i go on slack and muscle gym uh, i'm guarantee that as developers will probably get him involved and he'll answer it you know i, I haven't tested it but he's there. He'll, he'll see it. <laughs> yeah. I, I know Tim pretty well. And, and I know how much he uh, gets involved with the community. I know how much he gets involved with the all things MSP Facebook group, even before uh, compliance scorecard became a sponsor. So, you know, I think the way that he engages with the community just really speaks to how the product kind of came to life as well. Um, one last question for you. When, uh, you know, you're talking to other MSPs and things, I'm sure. What would your advice be uh, to an MSP who has not kind of gotten into this compliance GRC policy type of, of service offering for their clients? I mean, the first question is, do you like money? Because, you know, the answer should be yes, right? It's money on the table. Right. Um, but money aside, you know, it, it, we're, we're in a business. Obviously, we want to make money. But we also want to do the best thing for our clients. And we want to improve their maturity and make them better. And this is how you do it, right? Uh, one of my pet peeves, and I've, I've done a couple talks on this too, is if a client comes up and says, you know, hey, I want to be more secure. What should I do? And the first thing is, oh, well, let's do a pen test and we'll figure out what we need to secure. Um, if, they, if they come to me, the first thing I'm asking is, do you align to a risk framework? Do you have policies in place? And have you done internal vulnerability scanning? And usually the answer is no to most of those. And then I go, congrats, I just saved you $13,000, <laughs> right, uh, on a pen test. So again, you every, every business needs this. And if you're the trusted advisor, cybersecurity, you know, you're your trusted IT advisor, cybersecurity is becoming more and more prevalent. I mean, you can watch any sort of webinar or market growth strategy and it's, hey, cybersecurity is hot right now. This is what you need. And the compliance part of it is something that, I mean, it is kind of a little lacking because it's face it is, it's, there's nothing sexy about it. You're writing policies. It's pretty boring. Um, but it's something that's so crucial. And again, I mean, I've said it multiple times here, every business needs it. So again, if you're the trusted IT advisor, Advisor, you're the trusted cybersecurity advisor. Um, cyber insurance requirements are potentially asking for these. Um, I'm pretty involved with like the fifth wall guys and a couple other, one of my really good friends here in South Dakota is also a cyber insurance guru and they continue to bring up like the policies, like the wire fraud policy is a really big one. Um, there's a couple insurance providers that actually uh, won't pay out a wire fraud um, if you don't have a wire fraud procedure and policy documented in place. So again, these are things that your business might not know. So as again, as you as the trusted advisor can bring up to them and say, hey, you know, if we want to get you cybersecurity ready, we want to mature your organization, we need these policies in place. And now we have a solution to be able to give those to you. Yep. Well, Josh, thank you so much for coming on today and giving a partner perspective on Compliance Scorecard. We really do appreciate it. And I know that it's helpful to the community. So thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Thank you.